All right, all right, all right. We are in the room this morning. Welcome to all of you who have joined this morning's Zoom room. Those of you who are coming in on Facebook Live, welcome to Saturday School. Yes, I am Greg, also known as Asara, your facilitator, and I'm joined with our with me in the back room with by um, with V. She is our program director. So if you are out there on Facebook, if you are out there on in the Zoom room and you got a comment, you can type it into the feed and she will respond accordingly. Okay, good morning. Good to see you all again, once again, here in Saturday School. Saturday School, we are dealing with um, the last five weeks. We're in the six weeks now. Um, this is like a 12 week session is dealing with the basic principles of science of mind. Now I've taught this course um, probably about four times in the cycle, I'm doing something a little different. I am not um, going over the complete lecture, but I'm pulling out uh, maybe a thought that I want to engage you in on this morning. Um, and those of you who are part of the mailing system who have joined up, will get the complete assignment um, with the complete lecture. Uh, and so if you don't have um, access to the handouts, you might wanna reach out to me or put a, something in the feed there and I'll make sure you get it. Today is Saturday, uh, April, what are we at? April 16th, all right. Um, again, um, I'm happy to be with you this morning and I'm praying that you're happy to be with me. So we're talking about a topic this morning that has to do with um, your authority. That's what I wanna deal with today. I wanna to deal with the, your authority, the authority that you have, the authority that many of us don't walk inside of, um, don't understand. Uh, we're gonna look at the foundation of that authority. But today I'm gonna to deal with extreme thoughts. Um, I'm gonna deal with uh, the extreme thoughts that we often hold that defeat our desire or our attempts to walk in divine health. And now, even though I'm talking about health and healing, I'm also talking about anything you want to do, be, have, or experience. So while we go through this this morning, I'll share a few thoughts and probably check back in to see if there's questions, comments. Let me cut off this heater. Well, no Good. questions now. Good. Pardon me? Oh, I thought you were asking about questions. No questions. Oh, okay. Good. And I was um, cutting off the heater. So, okay. uh, awesome. Good morning. Anything out there this morning? Everybody's well? Um, anybody? Um, I would like to know what drew you to this morning? What brings you to class this morning? Ooh. Anybody want to answer that? You no, know, what's weird is Marcella came in with her hand up. Even if it's awesome. a mistake, we about to pick on her right now. Good morning, Marcella, yeah. with your hand up. <laughs> I told y'all something was wrong with my computer. <laughs> Don't blame the computer, girl. We want to talk to you. How you doing this morning? I am doing wonderful. Today is my grandbaby's reveal, so I'm going to find out what the gender is of my beautiful. Baby. <laughs> Do you want me to tell you right now what it is? Tell what us. Is tell it? us, Greg. No, I'm not telling you. I'm, I'm not ruining that for your your <laughs> your. Um, is that your son or your daughter-in-law? My son and his uh, fiance. Okay, no, I'm not going to ruin it. I'm not going to be a spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> I want a girl. Okay. Well, you, no, can, we always, you, you can always have a girl. Yes. <laughs> you know, okay, I can call you Sarah, and then you can get up in a situation. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm wearing pink today. Awesome. Okay. See, yeah. Let's see what happens. Good. I'm putting it out in the universe. Yes. Well, good morning. We welcome the... The, um, the child that will be coming forth, uh, um, regardless of that gender, that it will come into the world fully expressing itself as a spirit being, having a human experience, and that those who are around her or him, ah, may be, um, may be <laughs> um, aware of their influence and be open to hearing what she has, what, what it, the child has to say as it enters into the world from the spirit realm yes i okay. got so much i got so much to teach it awesome good deal good deal <laughs> and be open to learn she's coming it's coming right from source awesome yes okay good let us jump right in this morning thanks for 
um, jumping in this morning with us. To my Facebook audience, don't move by so quickly. Take a moment, listen to what is about to be said. To my audience that's in the Zoom room, don't find yourself trying to multitask. If you're here, be present. If you're not here, can't be present to right here, right now, hey, that's why I have the Oasis Spiritual Center's um, YouTube channel. You can always catch it at a later date, later time. But I do encourage you, if you show up to class, be present. You may hear something that you want to have me uh, extrapolate or to get deeper, do a deeper dive on, that if you wait and go to the um, recording, you won't have that opportunity to engage me real time. So maximize your time that you have this morning with me. So you see I have, for many of you, you are mistaken this cap, cap right here as a Cubs cap. It is an official Cubs logo, that is correct. But I wear this cap as my thinking cap every Saturday morning. This also represents conscious. It also represents Christ conscious. So not just any old consciousness and awareness, but having a Christ conscious. The word said, let this mind be in you. Come on now, what mind? That this says, let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, that he didn't count it as robbery to consider himself equal with God. Can anybody find that scripture? Let this mind be in you. If you find that scripture, put your hand up. If you're on Facebook Live, type, type, I got it. And we're going to pull you in and have you read it, okay? What is the scripture that I'm alluding to when I say, let this mind be in you? Now, I'm gonna give you some time to find that. There is a scripture also that says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. And with that scripture that has been quoted from many a pulpit, the individuals who have been the recipient of that statement went on to believe that you cannot have the thoughts of God. That is so erroneous. The truth of the matter is God, source, its thoughts are not your thoughts because you don't even fathom that you have them or have access to them. Come on now. We see anybody out there, V, with their hand up in regards to that first scripture that I quoted? Nobody yet. I'm actually looking it up myself. Give us a few minutes. Okay. So you guys, okay, I know some of y'all old school, y'all went to y'all Bibles and you went to the Concordia, so you went to the back of the Bible and you're looking up words. There's a new way, a better way, a more perfect way. All you have to do is go to your browser and you type in, my thoughts are not, and guess what? It's probably going to populate with the scripture. Did anybody Isaiah do that? Isaiah 55, 8, for my on, thoughts man. are not your thoughts. Click it over. Are your way, my way. Okay, awesome, awesome. Say that again, that's what? Isaiah 55, 8. Read it again. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my way. The Come on now. Lord. Okay, so now the uh, the other the other scripture that I asked you guys to find was, he did not count it robbery. Okay, to consider himself equal, find that scripture. But let's go to why they're finding it. Let me just drill down into Isaiah fifty five and fifty eight. And if you'll be so kind and read it one more time for the listening audience, just like the old church when they say read. <laughs> This feel like third grade again. It's really Saturday school. Okay. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my way, declares the Lord. Okay, so that's a definite statement, a statement of observation by source that his thoughts was not their thoughts. Their ways was not his way. A definite statement. He didn't say they can't be. And that's the same with many of us today. We don't think as God and we don't act as gods, but that's what charity school is all about. Come on now, we want to transcend having the, the thoughts that come from the lower self, the egotistical self, from the human domain, from just what we can do with our, our brain capacity. And we want to not live um, uh, or our ways to just be those things that some system has told us to do or not to do but we really want to align ourselves 
inside of the possibility that is available to us of being godlike. Okay, good. Did they, anybody else find that scripture? Oh, y'all, they're not working with us this morning, huh? I see. They want me to be the shining student. I'm going to put it on them, though. We're gonna go, we, we, I'm going to talk to the class. Those in the Zoom room. How many people we got in the Zoom room right now? Looks like um, it's about six people in the Zoom Marcella, room. Stella, Kenneth, Mama B, and Michelle Calloway are all okay, in the good. Zoom Good. Uh, maybe they can't get over to their computer, but I was asking and hoping that one of those guys would have um, looked in their browser and found that um, since Marcella really raised her hand, bring Marcella back online. Bring Marcella back on. We sorry, Marcella. We love you though, honey. All right, Marcella, you are now unmuted on my end. Marcella, did you browse? Okay. It? My browser's up. Okay. We appreciate it. And you're looking for that scripture that he did not counted as robbery okay when you type that in your browser it should populate he did not count it as robbery to consider or if you don't give you anything you add some more words like to consider himself equal all right when i typed it in i got philippians came up Nope. And I, so I'm, see, I'm, not on, I'm not on Google. I'm on DuckDuckGo. I don't know. Not even uh, DuckDuckGo. If you went into your whatever your browser is. And yes. It's, this is for all of you guys. This is just something I want to share with you all. When you are, let's say a scripture comes to mind, but you don't know where to find it. You don't even have to go to like um, Bible Gateway or any of those. You can just type it right in your browser at the top of your screen like you're doing a search. You don't have to be in um, Google, You don't, whatever your search engine is. Um, when you go to that search engine and you type it up, like if I went to the search engine right now and, um, and I was to type that in, um, I will come. Let me show you how fast it works. Um, that way you guys, this is Saturday School. It's about learning. That's right. And we're patient with you all. This is no judgment here. This is all schooling. Okay. And if you, so when I typed that in, it gave me, I typed in, he did not consider equality. And it took me to Ephesians, or it puts, uh, it, it drops in um, Ephesians 2, 5 through 11. And I'm going to go there. It says, having, have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ, who thought he was who thought, oh, no, no, who though he was in the form of God, did not count himself, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant being born in the likeness of men. Now, that is the English Standard Version. I don't really like that version. So I'm going to go in over here and I'm going to read that same scripture. Um, I'm going to read it from the um, the authorized King James Version first, okay? Uh, let's read it from there, because you all are familiar with that. Philippians 2, 5, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, verse 6, who being in the form of God, aren't you in the form of God? You're created in his image after his likeness. Thought it not robbery to be equal with God. You cannot do be or have with the capacity that you have available to you if you don't think you're equal with God. He says, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Now, equal does not be, mean the same. Verse seven, but made himself of no reputation. So we have to make ourselves of no reputation, meaning not this false humility, but it really means that we let go of our ego selves and we get to our true selves. Okay. He says, it says, but made himself of no reputation, took upon him the form of a servant. That's why you say my thoughts, my body are available to you, to it. Being found in a fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death. See, we got to get to the place where we're obedient unto death and not the death that you're dead as a doorknob, but the death that old thoughts always die out. Y'all getting this? Wherefore God also have highly exalted him and given him a name which is above 
every name. Come on now. So that's what happens when we take on Philippians 2, 5 through 11. And the name that we get is we are now sons and daughters of God. Can you get with that? That's what I want you to know. That is what I want you to know. So this morning, I want you to know that there is a possibility that you can heal yourself. I don't care. I'm not limiting that to any diagnosis or prognosis, anything. Also, in this conversation this morning, there are no judgments. So if you're on a, um, a cocktail of medication, continue to do that. While you're on that medication, you can do some other things. So I'm not giving medical advice this morning. I'm giving spiritual wisdom. This is a science class. We're going to start with Matthew chapter 9. In Matthew chapter 9, uh, many of you remember, this is a place where Jesus raises a dead girl, and he also heals a sick woman. And it reads, if you start in verse 16, it states, while he was saying this, a synagogue teacher or leader came and knelt before him and said, my daughter has just died, but come and put your hand on her and she will live. Now that's faith in action. That's not even belief. That's faith in action. See, anybody can say they believe something, but a belief that is not backed up by an action does not have, does not substantiate your faith. And he says, but come and put your hand on her and she will live. That sounded de declarative. Now, Jesus got up and he went with him. And so did his disciples, his students, those who were learning. So come with me. Just then a woman who had, here's another situation jumping off at the same time. Just then a woman who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years, y'all know her. She's the woman with the issue. She was bleeding out for 12 years, came up behind him and touched the edge of his cloak. And she said to herself, she said to herself, what are you saying to yourself? See, thoughts are important. She said, if I only touch the cloak, I will be healed. Nobody knows. She slipped in from the back of the crowd because all she wanted to do is just touch a little bit of his garment. Now, check this out. Here she is pressing in the back of the crowd, the crowd. Maybe let's say she's three people behind him. Um, she just touched his the hem of his garment. Um, she's not even be in, inside the circle of guards that he had. And look what happens. Jesus turned and saw her. He, 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 he picked up the thought. And he said to her, take heart, daughter. He said, your faith has healed you. Come on now. It's not your belief. It's your faith. It's your belief in action is faith. And the woman was healed at that moment. And when Jesus, he went on about his business, when Jesus entered the synagogue leader's house, Jairus, and he saw the noisy crowd, you know, they was wailing, they was crying. This little girl had died and the people uh, were playing pipes and so forth and so on. He said, go away. He said, clear the room. See, some of you guys trying to do some things, you got too many people involved in that conversation. You got too many people observing what really is the reality of the situation and keeping you present to what comes with that reality. Sometimes you got to clear the room. He says, go away. The girl is not dead, but asleep. She was in a state of being, a dormant state. But they laughed at him and people are going to laugh at you when you begin to hold these spiritual truths to be truth, your truth, your reality. People are going to look at you side eyed. They're going to look at you in a strange way. The girl is not dead, but asleep. But they laughed at him. As after the crowd had been put outside. He went in and he took the girl. He didn't pray nothing. He didn't say nothing. Look what he does. He has his faith in action. He took the girl by the hand and she got up. News of this spread through all the region. Come on. See, this faith is faith in action. So this morning I'm talking about, I'm, I'm talking about extreme thoughts. Okay. Um, they are dangerous. 
So we want we want to, to look at that. Um, anytime you give a truth to someone and you get the but, that's the self-doubt. Many times we have the self-doubt for our situation. Um, some may say, I don't believe my thought is powerful enough to heal because you haven't been taught it. Or I'm not a trained thinker. Uh, my education has been too limited. Or perhaps uh, it's happened for somebody else, but there's no way it can happen to me. Or you may simply say, my willpower is too weak. What are you saying to yourself? I'll give up before my thought influences my flesh because you have a habit of giving up. So we want to we want we, we want to move away from that today. We want to we want to move away from that kind those kinds of thoughts. In this course, Bale says, when the student really comes to understand that the healing process does not involve your willpower or struggle. Now, not just for healing, but anything that you are desiring to manifest, if you have willpower or struggle involved with it, then you're not creating as source or as God. Now, he says, when the student really comes to understand that the healing process does not involve his willpower or struggle, but that the infinite thinker, source, greater mind, through his thought, downloads to you, and now it becomes your thought, it becomes flesh. His consciousness of healing will be greatly strengthened. In a nutshell, this is where you, what you need to know. He, sickness and disease is a deviation from the perfect state. Everything that emanates from source is perfect. When it shows up in this realm, manifested realm, and is impacted by this conditions of the environment, of the thoughts, perhaps the, the woman who was pregnant and had um, anxiety all along and that child is born with certain uh, manifested, manifested diseases. It's a result of that child that was perfect being acted on by the thought of or by the environment, the food the mama probably was eating, the prenatal care the mama may have been taking. It all impacts the mother. Even the thoughts of the father towards the mother. Is he properly engaged with her? The scripture says, now, I'm going to show you something. For you. I had four children. No, I didn't have four children. I was part of the process of four children. And I was there for three of the four. One, um, one of the four was born um, in Birmingham, Alabama. Um, and so um, I wasn't there for the process. But here's something we um, held for all four of our children. There's a scripture says, that she should be child, she should be saved in childbirth if they, what they got to do with him if she's having a child. So there's a, there is a oneness of being between the, the woman with the child and the man who gave her the child. He said, the scripture says, if they continue in, let me find that for you. I believe, um, V, um, look it up, go to, look for the scriptures. Uh, if they continue in love, or you can type in, she shall be saved in childbearing. And when you got it, jump right on in. So here's, I'm, 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 somebody that's pregnant right now, somebody, I gave this to my daughters. And here's what I'm saying. My late wife did not succumb to what we would call the curse of childbearing. If you go back to G Genesis, it says that she would have children, uh, bear children in pain. That was part of the curse. But in the New Testament, we're released from the curse. I'm talking to Christians now. I'm talking to those who believe wow. in the scripture. So you find it. 1 Timothy 2.15 says, but women, but women will be saved through childbearing if they continue in faith, love, and holiness with the propriety. That's the NIV version. Okay, so take it to the King James Version. Can you click into the King James Version? I can. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in no, faith. No, back, if who? By herself? Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. No, see, see, that's a whole nother conversation that we can get into. But one thing I want you to know that the man impacts whether or not she will have 
a, a, a birthing process that mm. is with ease. Now, it doesn't say that you're not going to have any level of discomfort because the body gives you the level of discomfort to let you know to do what? Have a baby. Okay. Okay. So, okay. So now that baby is crowning you on the, you on the table when the, what happens when you know, to let you know, you need to push. The contraction, the that contraction. Baby is naturally ready. Yeah. It says it's ready. And, but then okay. the doctor looking at, if the doctor is standing down there and he's in that position to catch that baby, he'll say that that head is crowning at, okay. let's say it's crowning at a three. No, he don't want you to push. Or you might have that big head baby that the doctor say, <laughs> if you push, you're going to mess yourself up. That's right. So, you want you to do it slowly. Right. So here's the point I'm, I'm, I'm saying. The, the natural body, what we would call pain, is a level of a comfortableness. Mm -hmm. And I believe that if you, like we went through what was known as Lama's classes, taught her how to breathe, how to relax. Um, we set the environment in the room for the baby to come into a, a warm, loving, accepting environment. Um, so all those things help for, so for three of my four children, I know for surety that Tony did not take the epidural. Is that what that is? That is what the pain medicine during labor is. Yes. Thank you, yes. Yeah. See, I need you on this call this morning. <laughs> What'd you say? I say, I got you. I've done this five <laughs> times. Thank you, Lord. Oh, so you know. So let me ask you this. Did you do natural childbirth or did you go through um, the with the epidural? Oh, you wouldn't believe it. Every child, five of them, Facebook and Zoom, our natural vaginal childbirths. Come on now. I she promise. Just, she just I can't natural. make this up. And my childbirth. mama probably listening in, so I can't fabricate this. Okay. Every child I've birthed was natural. Awesome. Awesome. So, so see now, now you can share with your daughter and because of your conversation, your daughters will have the same experience, but now you're going to take it to another level in that you tell them when she's pregnant, the moment, matter of fact, before the seed engages that um, egg, when you guys know that you want to bring forth, it's time to bring forth the child, you guys need to be in a harmonious state because whatever is going on within him and whatever's going on with her, it will impact act on that child. So if the brother man is having some mental health issues or got stressors in his life, come on now, it's not probably not time for him to drop that seed on you. Does that make sense? I'm all does it. I so we, we only look, come on, we only look at this thing from one side of the equation that the man dropped the seed and that's he can be gone. But he's dropping his DNA, he's dropping his resonance, he's dropping his energy inside of her, they're coming together, creating a perfect being, but that perfect being may come forth with imperfections because of the imperfections of the family. Well, how did I get to this conversation? I got to this because I want you to know in source, in God, as you call it, everything is perfect. When it hits this realm is when it gets the deviation. Does that make sense? It does, it does. Any questions out there? No questions currently. Let me check. Justin Marcella got us that first Timothy 215. So thank you, Marcella. Thank we got you. Kyle Covington that just came onto Facebook. So welcome to Facebook. I'll keep watching. Okay. You all can drop any questions right here in the chat box. Okay. So any of you that know a young lady um, or a young couple that is about to get um, uh, start that process of procreating uh, intimacy with the direct um, desire of procreation, familiarize them with this, okay? Now, um, Bales in his teaching says, you as a student will gain further assurance when you come to know that the infinite mind, that is source, the greater mind, flows steadily and continuously through your brain, okay? So it flows through your brain. The greater mind connects with your mind, flows through your brain. Now, your brain can filter it out. Your brain, when you lean heavily, that's why it says lean not to your understanding. When you are one who are sensory based, um, and this is something that those who have higher education have to be um, careful with. Those who have a lot of information have to be careful with because you have a tendency to lean into what you think you know that you have gained by way of the classroom or maybe your own personal experience, okay? So the student you 
you can gain further assurance when you come to the realization that the infinite mind flows steadily and continuously through your brain at all times. So right now, I want you to say the infinite mind of God, of source, flows continually to me and through me, okay? The infinite mind of source flows continually to me and through me. Because guess what? It's always coming to you, but you can have a, 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 a filter that it can't get on the inside. Or you may have um, um, the filter that allows it on the inside, but then you've got another check valve that keeps it from flowing fully through you. And that's your thoughts. It says, your consciousness of healing will increase and you'll be greatly strengthened. Okay? You will gain further assurance when you come to know that the infinite mind flows continually through you. Now, when you do this, you're now dealing not with human frailty, not with your limitations, but you now have access to and you're dealing with what we call in the science of mind, the absolute power and wisdom. So, okay, you, you, uh, God isn't strength, God is power. Okay, God isn't information and knowledge, God is wisdom. But now you have access to this absolute power and wisdom, the power and wisdom that have never been balked at or turned back from. That's like when you have that power, when you have that wisdom, like the, the Jarius, he ran to Jesus to get Jesus to come to his house. He, he did not have the wherewithal to know that he could do the same thing that Jesus could do. The woman with the issue of blood, she knew that if she could just get there, that that healing would be made manifest. She didn't realize that she had access to that same power right where she was before she made her journey. But because she made her journey, it showed her where her faith was. Come on now. Just like when you go, see, why we go to church? Because we have faith that when we go there, we'll get a message. Okay. Originally. Why do we give tithes and offerings? Because when we do that, we, it's an act of faith that we believe the scripture says, give and it shall be given to you. We are standing in alignment with the scriptures. That's the law of circulation that says God always gives to you first. And you have a corresponding action that is to, to, to sow. He gives seed to the sower. Whatever the seed is, whatever the new thought that God gives you, you have to sow it. You have to plant it somewhere. You have to put it to work, not just hold on to it, not just chew on it for yourself, but put it to work. That was inside. So you have power available to you. And I say that all the time in my prayers in the morning with you on morning meditation. I acknowledge in every morning when I wake up and throughout my day, I acknowledge that there is a power that's greater than me. There's a power that surrounds me. There's a power that's flowing to me. There's a power that's flowing through me. And I say this, and I have access to it. And I choose to use it. Come on, okay? And you gotta always know this. Now, we have some extreme thoughts that actually can derail the work we are attempting to do, okay? There are two extreme thoughts that you have to be conscious of, uh, which the student of divine science must be aware of. That both will defeat your attempts to manifest or to heal whatever it is, since we're talking about healing, that you're trying to heal. Okay? So the first one we've been talking to, we talked about when we first started this conversation, had to do with self-depreciation. That is saying what you can't do, identifying your inabilities, the butt that you um, engage this thought with, that's self-depreciation. So we always got to be mindful of the words we speak, the thoughts we think that are self-depreciating. Do I have any questions out there? Not at the moment, but Marcella's hand is up again. Just let me know that that is in error if you have a question we'll unmute you i yes, think she has a glitch because i see it kind of glitching a little bit hi marcella okay okay so we'll leave her alone 
when we talk about self depreciation, we're talking about the yes, lo- yes, ma'am. Go ahead. I, oh. I do, I do have a question. Okay, um, actually, it's a comment. Um, you have mentioned uh, this fellow, uh, Bill Winston. So I went and um, just checked him out and everything and watched one of his um, messages. And he talked about, he was talking about faith and fear. And he said, look at faith as, say for instance, analogy, you own your home and you have the deed to your home. So look at faith as um, a deed. You own it, so you can use it. So I think what's that analogy um, about death and taxes that people people say? They say um, um, you're gonna do th- three things. One, you're gonna die, you're gonna pay taxes, and you're gonna stay black in the black community. That's there was three. That's exactly <laughs> what I was thinking. <laughs> so but, those are th- two things that we can that will never um, be without. Right, so we can add um, uh, faith to those um, four things. So awesome. So as long as you're in the United States of America, you have uh, four things you're gonna have that you have the title deed to. You're gonna pay taxes or you're going to jail. Um, Two, uh, you're gonna die as long as you're in this earth realm. Now here's the reality though. When we talk about dying, we don't die as the world dies. We know that the truth is we all will share this mortal body. Okay, so we, we know that's going to happen. To get back to the spirit realm, the in the realm of energy, you die, the body dies. So I, it's not you, the, this earth suit. You are not your body. You are not your brain. You are this energy that is behind all of that. Does that make sense to you guys right there? Yeah. Okay, because we over-identify with this 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 earth suit just like many of us over identify with a favorite pair of shoes with a favorite jacket uh maybe when when we get uh to our feet are swollen and we can't wear them no longer we still hold on to them when they're heels that we just know was will will make all men pause when you come into the room you know you can't wear them no more but you hold on to them when y'all did y'all catch that Men all Paul. Yeah, see, that's an old school record. Okay. So um, or we hold on to clothing items that we will no longer get back into, or clothing items that at this stage in our life and what we're doing, we shouldn't be seen wearing them. Because we over-identify with them, just as we over-identify with our bodies, and we don't want to let it go. We struggle to hold on to it. I am not afraid to transition. I just don't want it to be painful. I want to be quick, fast, in a hurry. Come on now. Amen. Oh, let me go to sleep and not wake up. That's why before I go to sleep, I say, if I should die before I wake up, pray the Lord, my soul, I take. <laughs> See, I'm not joking with you guys. But I, you know, I make amends before I go to sleep. Oh, I let people, I say, See you in the morning. So here's the point I'm making with that statement. Let go of our ego selves. But our ego selves, many times, We don't love them as we should love them. They are not working in our behalf. We often have self-defeating thoughts, self-depreciating thoughts that are extreme that get in the way of, of, of us being masterful at life. And the second one he talks about this morning is the, uh, the extreme of conceit. So we're dealing with two extremes this morning. One self-depreciation. Okay or two, and or deceit, overwhelming self-esteem, okay, overwhelming self-esteem. It is evidence that the student has his mind on himself rather than on the tremendous power of the infinite, of source. When you take ownership of it, not realizing that in yourself, you can do no great thing in yourself, in your physical self, in your sensory self, in your egotistical self, but always aligning with this is happening through you. The person who says, I am, check this out. The person who says, now listen for this because you're going to hear it this week. I am a powerful healer. Or when we tell someone that they are a powerful healer, we are looking not to a source from which all blessings come, but we're looking at the conduit through which is showing up. 
So you're going to listen for this. The person who says, I am a powerful healer, has stepped out of the infinite placement. So when you say, if you ever say, I am the powerful healer, you stepped out of the proper alignment. Okay? But he who says this, this is a marvelous law of healing that is working to me, through me, and on me. Can y'all see the difference there? You will continue to heal because you're in the flow. You're just the conduit through which the power runs through to manifest itself in the fullness of itself. Source never shows up fully as disease as darkness source is the light i got anything happening out there in facebook is there anything in the zoom room nothing in the zoom room or facebook right now and marcella's hand is actually down all right now hey good 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 all right now here's here's what he says uh, um he says it is noticeable that jesus avoided both these extremes he was fully aware always that the remarkable healings attributed to him were not accomplished by the human jesus of nazareth and see that we have to say the remarkable things that we do are not attributed to the humanness but are attributed to our divineness by the wisdom of source or of god that indwells us when the peace, when the people would have lionized him, he said, of myself, I can do no thing. Notice that. I want you to say that right now. Everybody. Of myself. Oh, see, why are you in why y'all wait a minute? Wait, wait, let me stop. Why are you in class right now? Why are you in class when you won't participate? Let's try it one more time. Of myself. I can do nothing. That was so much better. Okay. He says, of myself, I can do nothing. It is the Father in me. It is source in me. It is the divine running through me who does the work. I don't have to heal my... So even though it says, physician, heal thyself, it means be in alignment with the marvelous law of healing. Be in alignment with the marvelous law of prosperity. Get in alignment with the marvelous law of attraction. We are so busy doing something in ourselves with this hit and miss um, results. But I'm a spiritual scientist. And a scientist is always looking for to get the results all the time. Because if you get the results all the time, then it becomes a truth. It becomes a fact. He also said, I am the father I one, because he knew that whatever source is in the large, he as Jesus humanity was that in the small. So you, whatever God is, source is on a macrocosm level, micro, micro as on a macro level, God is on a micro level in me. I hope this is setting in. It's going to make a difference. It's going to make a big difference. Marcella just typed in John 14, 3. Okay. Yeah. What is that? Hold on. Let's get her unmuted because I'm also looking that up to see what that means. Sorry, Marcella. I feel like we're picking on you in Sunday school. Oh, she's, part, she's, she's one of the stellar students. Um, so we appreciate you. We appreciate her. She's always sitting in the front of the class. That's um, right. Please. Marcella, what about John 14, 3? Okay, she's just a studious kind of a person. I'm trying to get an A plus. I know that's right. No, 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 I'm getting you. You're showing up as a as a great student. Awesome. So, but you know the rest of the students in the class looking at you side-eyed right now. I know they looking at you funny. Teachers. I just, I just, I just, I just she needs to go sit her. I just stuff. thought that, that that scripture related to what you just said. What is it? Does it like I go to pair, prepare a place for you? Okay, okay. I awesome. So that's okay. So what He's completing the whole thing that where he is, that you, he said, I go to prepare a place where, for you, that where I am, 
you will be also. Is that just, now I'm giving the verge script. I've read it so many times. I'm pulling it down. I got a little dust on there. Uh, but do you have the complete scripture pulled up? Yeah. Are you reading it from the King James Version? Uh, King James. Let's see. King James Bible. Okay, good. So go ahead. Give us that complete scripture. All right. Let me find 14. All right, 14, I think I'm looking at the wrong one. Let me see. Are you in the online? It says, or? and I go. Okay. And I go and prepare a place for you. I will come back and welcome. That's, I don't think that's- Come back. Wait a minute. If I go away and prepare a place for you, I will come back and receive you to myself so that where I am, you may be also. Awesome. Okay. So now, now that where he is, you will be. And so here's the reality of that thing is there is the understanding that heaven is right here on earth. Right, heaven is right here in earth. For you are the earth that heaven resides in. Also, you can have hell right here on earth. When you have hellish thoughts, when you have, and see a hellish thought is not a diabol diabolical thought, but a hellish thought is a thought that is less than the perfect thought. It's an alternative thought. It's a thought that I can't be healed. That's a hellish thought. It's a thought that is part of the human condition to have sickness, disease, and um, live inside of, uh, uh, of, of poverty. But we want to go to the place where a higher place that this mind will be in you. That's important. Also. Doesn't doesn't that also relate to uh, the creative mind, like an idea? Say you have an idea and you don't know where to start, so you get started, and I prepare a place for you. Does that mean that? Um, yeah. Here's it is meditation. In okay. meditation okay. is where the idea pops. And the idea pops and then you you take it to the next level of imagination, imagining what it would be. You don't know how it's going, how it will be, when it will be, but you just stay there and you hold that energy. And it, it comes back with you into the reality and ultimately you'll get a divine um, uh, idea. You may be looking at something and you say, is that kind of, that's how I can make that happen. So too many of us are waiting to get all the instructions and just staying inside of what I want to experience. And as the day unfolds, the things that are essential will show up. That's important. You have to do the work. You, and see, when we use that word work, it's not the work that the world, the effort. Right. You're uh -huh. just being, okay, you're being obedient. Where intuitive urge of the spirit says, go left or the intuitive urge of the spirit says buy this you don't know why you buying it but when you buy it at some point like buying a book you go to the bookstore the book jumps off the shelf you look at it maybe there's one thing that's interesting to you interesting enough that you buy the whole book you read that and then you put it on the bookshelf six months later a divine idea comes and it says go to the bookshelf and pull this book now the book has more information in it that has always been in it, but you weren't ready for it. Make sense? Makes sense, yes. So here's the, the, the point I'm make, making here, that we are have to get to the realization that we are the self-same power that brought this world into existence. Come on now. Um, and that same power is working through us to bring our bodies into subjection to the word of God. Okay. Uh, so Christ had, like you should be gathering, a complete sense of oneness with the infinite. So that's what I want you to come away with tonight, today. I want you to start aligning with, I'm one with source. 
Okay, you are come in 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 oneness with the infinite, and with the infinite method of creating. Okay, and the the infinite does not even create; it just beads. And we have to get. It says, in whatever state I'm in, I find contentment. It doesn't say I find I'm complacent, but I find contentment in knowing this. There's a power that's working to me, through me, that there's things are always working out for me, even when they don't appear to be working out for me. Things are working out for me. And we want to get away from self what he, what he called self and uh, aggrandizement, aggrandizement, which from is prompted the statement that he says, I and the Father. So it's always never I by myself. I and the Father. It's, you can simply say when someone gives you, I and the Father are one. I do no thing except I see, I hear, source doing it, showing it, saying it, and I do it. That's why Christ spent a lot of time in meditation. Even if the, as, we, as he went prepared to go or climb that mountain to um, Golgotha, um, he checked in with he could have very easily said, I know what's going to happen. No, he checked in because he wanted to know, do I need to continue to go through, through, through with this? He said, if I must drink from this cup, so be it. But if it's not your highest and greatest good for me, I'll take that too. So when you even think you know what the next step is, it's good to check in to make sure that source God has not called an audible. Y'all know what an audible is? If you play football, if you like football, that's when the, the, the quarterback steps up under the center and he looks around and he sees the de defensive set has changed. And so he knows the play that I call is not the best play for what's being presented to us. So he has an alternate play that he says a couple words and all the people on the line, all the people in the backfield, all the receivers know it's a new play. Make room for God to have a new play in your life. Ooh, Dorothy Robertson just came in on Facebook and said, if it wasn't, I would have told you so. Come on now. Come That's on. the source's own now. words. Come on, Dorothy. Come through on Facebook. All of us need to know that. He will tell you. Come on now. He go to prepare a place for you. In my father's house is many mansions. And if it was not so, I would tell you so. There's many houses in God's mansion. Enough for all of us. Now, I want to end with this. There's a scripture, Ephesians 3 and 20, one of my favorite scriptures. And it reads like this from the King James Version. Now unto him, now unto it, that is able to do. It is, not you. It is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all. What does all mean? All, everything. Everything. That's right, that we ask everything that we decree, it can do more than that. Everything that we think, it can do exceedingly abundantly above that. But check this out, according to the power that works in us, if you don't acknowledge the power that works in you, source cannot, because you have a buffer because your thoughts are not its thoughts. Come on, your ways are not its ways. But we wanna move from that old stinking thinking, that old religious vanguard that tells us that you, are, uh, that you are a sinner saved by grace. No, that's not true. That's not true. That is not why Christ came here, or that's why not why we explore the messages of the cross. We all miss the mark. He came here to realign us that we can realize that God lives in us. Source works through us. So that's what I want to leave you with. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think.
according to the power that worketh in us. Get the power. Stop fighting the power that be. <laughs> awesome. That's all I have. Let us um, let us um, go to the green room and have a conversation. Uh, if there's any conversation or any questions out there on Facebook, uh, let us um, entertain them right now. Our star student, Marcella, she said, affirm this to be true. I know things are always working out for me. Yes. Power is oneness. Absolutely. You know, people really turn their nose up when you say things like that. Things are always working out for people. People be hating. Quote me right there, okay? Right. That's right. Uh, things are always working out for me, even when they don't appear. So if I get, so you wake up with the sniffles, you can say things are always working out for me, even if they don't appear to be working out for me, because now you get to see the power that works inside of you to do what you desire it to do, to heal the sniffles. So sometimes when you have an experience in your physical body, it's not because you have a sin, but you have perhaps done some things that set, that's the perfect setup, but now it's the perfect setup for the power that dwells in you to work through you and shift that thing. I'm looking out my window and there's a squirrel sitting on, on the ledge looking at like he's listening to what I'm saying. He's picking it up. He's picking it up. Are you picking it up this morning? So it don't look like we have any questions. Not that I'm seeing, no. Okay, well, another Saturday school is in the books. You want access to this, you can go to Oasis Spiritual Center Go to YouTube and just type in Oasis Spiritual Center and you will have access to all the teachings 